Have you ever found yourself thinking about overclocking your graphics card, but then you never actually do it because you don't really know how, or you pretty much have no idea where to even start? That's actually perfect because in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can easily overclock your GPU using one of my favorite software utilities. But first, we got to make some coffee. The first thing that you're going to need to do is download your overclocking utility software. My personal favorite to use from experience is MSI Afterburner. So go over to MSI's website, you can actually just Google MSI Afterburner, it'll take you to their page that looks just like this. Click on the downloads tab and I want you to get MSI Afterburner and also MSI Combustor. Afterburner is the actual overclocking utility itself and Combustor is actually a stress testing utility that integrates into the overclocking uh, utility panel and we're going to use that to test the stability of our overclocks. So download both of those and it's Install them just like you would install any other software. Once you've got MSI Afterburner installed, go ahead and launch it. The first thing that I do when I'm overclocking is I really want to make sure that I have access to all of the manual settings available to me. You'll notice in MSI Afterburner, by default, you can't change the core voltage control. So in order to fix that, we're going to click here on the gear to open up the settings panel and we're going to check unlock voltage control and click OK. That's going to prompt you to restart Afterburner. Go ahead and click yes. Now that Afterburner has restarted, you can see that I can actually play with this slider at the top now. So in order to get things started, we're going to go ahead and take this core voltage slider and slide it all the way as far as it will go. Now, you're probably freaking out right now saying, how much freaking voltage are you throwing at your GPU? But that's not really how it works. You probably think that from your experience working with CPUs, but when you work with GPUs, it's a little bit different. The GPU is only going to use the amount of voltage that it needs. It's not just going to set that as like plus 100 millivolts or something like that. It's going to allow it to take as much as it possibly can um, within the temperature and and, uh, power targets that we're going to set. So we're going to go ahead and crank that up. And then the one below it is power limit. I'm going to want You're going to want to make sure that that's as high as it will go. On this particular GPU that I'm using, I can only go to 100. But if I go and get my GTX 1070 or 1080, this will actually go higher than 100. So whatever that value is for you, go ahead and max that right out. And also the temperature limit just below it, max that out as well. Now that might look a little scary because what you're saying here is that um, we don't want the GPU to start throttling until it hits 97 Celsius. Celsius, which is like star-like temperatures, but um, in my experience overclocking, I've never come anywhere close to that. So I always set that as high as it will go because I don't want to run into any thermal throttling or anything like that. So once you've got your voltage, power limits, and temperature settings all configured, we can start overclocking, and we're going to start with the core clock. What we're going to want to do is increase this in increments and then stress test each time to make sure that it's stable. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and bump this up by 50 megahertz and then press enter. Now, anytime you apply an overclock in MSI Afterburner, you have to click this check mark down here. So don't forget to do that. So now my overclock is applied. Before we go into our stress testing, I just want to talk about the fan speed. You can take this and sort of set it wherever you want to try and maximize performance or minimize noise. But in my experience, auto works just fine. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. You can always play with that after as well. But I find that auto on these, uh, especially on these Pascal GPUs, um, it really does a pretty good job at cooling. So um, the, the graphics card that we're using today is the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti. This is a lower tier graphics card and I'm purposely using this to show you that you don't really need a super high-end GPU in order to see the benefits of overclocking. You'll see that a little bit later in this video. So now that we've got our initial overclock dialed in, we're going to come up here and click on this little K button next to the Afterburner logo. This is going to launch MSI Combustor, which is the stress testing utility that we're going to use that we downloaded when we installed the software. You're going to click that and it's going to automatically run a stress test. So here's the MSI Combustor window here. I'm just going to slide it over so you can see everything. What this is going to do is stress your GPU. You can see it's loaded up to the 90s. It hit 94 for a second there. It's going to go ahead and load it up and uh, process this graphic here just to see if there's any weaknesses. Like, is there going to be any artifacts? It'll kind of scan for it over here. Um, your GPU driver could crash. Your screen could go black. Anything like that would indicate a, um, a clear instability with this overclock. So what you want to do is let this run for a minute or two um, with your initial overclock. And if everything looks good, you can close it, go back, and then bump it up another 50 megahertz 
components and kind of repeat the process. Going back to MSI Afterburner, I'm going to bump the core value up another 50, so that will total 100. I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to apply the overclock by clicking the checkbox. Once you've done that, go ahead and launch Combustor and do another stress test. This time, and actually each time you bump it up, I would recommend letting Combustor run a little bit longer, just so that um, you really have, you know, you really want to make every effort that you can to weed out any instabilities or anything that might creep up on you when you're gaming. So I'm going to let this one run for a couple of minutes just to ensure that 100 megahertz is stable, at which point I will then close it, go back in, bump the core up another 50 megahertz, and we'll test it again. Now that's only as long as this is going to come back stable. If there's any issues with it, um, then we know 100 megahertz isn't quite stable. What I would then do is start dropping the core value a little bit and running stress tests. Now I wouldn't go down another 50 from here. I'd probably start going down in increments of 10 to try and find my maximum stable overclock. So we'll let this run a couple minutes and then we'll jump back in and see if we can bump it up again. All right, 100 megahertz was rock solid stable. So we're going to go ahead and go for 150 megahertz now. Hit enter, apply the overclock and launch combustor. It looks like 150 megahertz is also going to be stable. So I'm going to start pushing it a little bit higher than that. Um, because we're getting so high, I'm going to decrease the amount that I'm increasing the clock speed by, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go back into MSI Afterburner, and instead of going to 200, I'm going to go to 175. Hit enter, and click the check mark, and launch Combustor. 175 is looking pretty stable, so I'm going to go back into MSI Afterburner and try for 200. So 200 megahertz wasn't completely stable for me on this GTX 1050 Ti. The NVIDIA driver actually crashed. Uh, the screen started to flicker a bit, but it did recover itself and everything is now fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, now that I know that 200 megahertz is totally uh, not going to be stable for me, I'm going to go ahead and bump that back down to 175. And I'm, I feel pretty comfortable with that. That's a pretty respectable overclock, and I'm going to use that as sort of my everyday overclock here. Now that we found our maximum core GPU overclock, we can go ahead and start memory overclocking. In my experience, memory always goes a little bit further than the core, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start with a lot higher values than what you just saw. I'm going to kick things off with 250 megahertz, press enter, apply the overclock, and launch combustor. Once you've confirmed stability with your initial memory overclock, close Combustor, jump back into MSI Afterburner, and kick it up a notch. If 500 megahertz on your GPU seems to be stable, you know what to do. Okay, so I bumped the memory clock up to 850 megahertz boost, and it totally failed. Combustor wouldn't run for more than like 30 seconds or so. So um, I then went back into MSI Afterburner. I brought it back down to 800 and same thing. I wasn't able to achieve stability. So it looks like about 750 seems to be the sweet spot on this particular GTX 1050 Ti. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that back in because I know that's my safest and most stable overclock. And here you have it. So this is going to be our final setting. We've got our core voltage percentage cranked up. We have our power limit cranked up, our temperature limit cranked up cranked up, a core clock overclock of 175 megahertz, and a memory clock overclock of plus 750 megahertz. We're going to leave our fan speed at auto because it's kind of hovering around 50%, which is probably what I'd want to set it at anyway, 50-60%, nothing more than that because it starts to sound like a freaking jet engine. Um, so you, you get a pretty good balance of uh, performance and uh, sound levels at around 50-60% to 60 with this particular card. Um, so now that we know what we want here, we've got our overclock all dialed in. We're going to make sure it's applied and then go ahead and save it to one of the profiles here. You can just click profile one and save that. So now anytime you want to load your overclock, it's really easy. It's all saved here. You don't have to go through this long sort of process of figuring out where you want to be. And you also don't have to memorize any of these settings. You just sort of load the profile, click apply, and you'll be able to, to run that. Also, if you want to go ahead and take that a step further, go back into the settings and you can click start with Windows and we'll start minimized if you don't want it right in your face every time Windows boots. But I always check these so that um, MSI Afterburner will boot when I load it into Windows and it'll automatically apply my overclocks for me. All right, so everything's looking good. You're probably like, well, that was pretty easy. I can do that. And I see no reason why you can't. So go ahead and try it. But just remember, if you fry your GPU, that's all on you. So we've gone through this lengthy process. We've pushed the GPU as far as we can. We dialed in our overclock with as much precision as we possibly can or want to. Um, so what does that really mean? Does that get us any real world performance advantage here? Or are we just kind of pushing the, the, the graphics card to its limits and it's going to shorten its lifespan? Um, I see we jump in some games and compare the overclock settings to the stock settings and see if there's actually any real world difference.
I think those results pretty much speak for themselves. We were able to get some extra real world noticeable performance from overclocking our GPU. And the best part was it was easy to do, it didn't take that long, and at the end of the day, nothing blew up. Yet. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed for more videos just like this.